Hi, I'm Dr. Robert Anderson, and I'd like to spend a few minutes talking about one of the procedures that we use in the in vitro fertilization laboratory every day, which has been a tremendous benefit to us and to our patients. This procedure is called intracytoplasmic sperm injection, or ICSI. The first pregnancy from ICSI uh, was in 1992, and since then, the procedure has been used more and more in standard in vitro fertilization practice. In our laboratory, for instance, we routinely use ICSI for every case of in vitro fertilization. The procedure basically involves a microscopic uh, setup using one single sperm to fertilize each egg. And what's done is the sperm are selected and then they're injected directly into the egg for the purpose of fertilization. The initial application of ICSI was for instances of men who had very low sperm counts, and indeed we still use it for that. However, because of the fact that we only need to use one sperm per egg, it's opened up some other areas of use that we now make uh, routine use of. For instance, men who've had vasectomies no longer necessarily have to have a vasectomy reversal. We can simply remove the sperm that we need directly from the testicle and obtain enough sperm to be able to inject one in per egg to fertilize them. We also use it in instances of men who have very, very low sperm counts. In fact, some of them have something called non-obstructive vasospermia, where we're not even able to detect any sperm at all on a semen analysis. With a particular testicular microdissection procedure, the urologist is often able to give us enough sperm to be able to do ICSI to fertilize eggs. And then, as I said before, we use it routinely for all of our instances of in vitro fertilization. Back in the days before we had ICSI, we occasionally would have instances where a man with a normal semen analysis and normal eggs obtained from his wife on in vitro fertilization procedure found the next day after we put the sperm and the egg together in the laboratory that fertilization didn't take place. These unexpected fertilization failures, as you can imagine, are quite devastating to the couple and to us as well. So to prevent these occurrences these days, we just simply use ICSI for every egg that we have in an in vitro cycle, and these kinds of, cycle, of the problems don't take place. So let's go to the laboratory now and see how ICSI is done. This is the micromanipulation setup that we use to perform ICSI. It's a microscope that has a special stage which is warmed where we place the eggs and sperm and it has special holders for the injection and uh, holding pipettes attached as well. And then the manipulation is done with a hydraulic system attached to the handles on either side of the uh, microscope so the technician can manipulate the pipettes easily. Let's look at an actual ICSI being performed. Here the technician is about to pick up the sperm. He's now sucked it into the tube and he'll do that a couple of times. He's just used the pipette on the tail to activate the sperm and now he's aspirating it into the injection pipette. Now the egg comes into view. On the left side of the screen is a holding pipette, so a suction is applied and that allows us to hold on to the egg while the sperm is being injected. The injection pipette is then placed through the zona pellucida of the egg and into the cytoplasm. And the sperm is injected with minimal trauma to the egg. So as you can see, ICSI is quite a routine procedure. It's simple to do, it's done pretty quickly, uh, and it ensures that we have the highest rate of fertilization possible whenever we do an in vitro fertilization cycle. For that reason, it's uh, probably one of the most 
helpful procedures that have come along in the last 20 years and one that we continue to be able to offer to our patients on a routine basis. Thanks for listening.